Well, hello again, poetry lovers. Uh, time to talk about um, uh, one of the George Herbert poems that, uh, that I've assigned you for this week, and it's the poem Easter Wings. So if you take a look at it there on the page, um, you will see that it is in a uh, very odd shape. Um, this uh, poem falls under the category of what is called uh, formally Carmina Figurata. Uh, your book refers to it as an emblem poem. These are also called shape, uh, shaped or pattern uh, poems as well. And these kinds of poems are, are basically as old as poetry itself. Um, so you can find examples in, uh, in basically every culture. Uh, and there are poems that are written in various shapes, everything from you know, eggs to pan pipes, uh, here, of course, to a pair of wings, um, have survived from uh, classical Greek times. So Renaissance England, as it turns out, produced uh, lots of shaped poems, and, um, and Herbert was its probably its best-known purveyor. Uh, he's got poems in the shapes of altars and, uh, and so forth, in addition to the wings. But, uh, but here, Easter Wings is probably the best known of the, um, of the poems. And so here's the deal with, with Carmina Figurata. The idea is that, that you are, are creating a poem then that, uh, that in, its, uh, in its form on the page, so we talked about, uh, about poetic forms, and we said that um, uh, you know, couplets and quatrains and, and, um, um, and, and sestets and so forth, uh, we either can determine their, uh, their stanzaic form uh, by the rhyme scheme that we recognize or by the, um, the configuration of lines on a page offset by a white space. So here's a good example then of, uh, of stanzas that are set off by white space so that the form itself becomes uh, sort of front and center. Now, <clears throat> it's easy enough, uh, give, especially given uh, contemporary uh, typography using a computer, to, uh, to create all sorts of, of false shapes. For example, um, I'm gonna give you this one here. Uh, so you've got the, the, the shape of the poem as a, um, as a goblet, okay? Uh, as a chalice, actually, okay? So here's the thing about it. Um, the poem itself, in terms of content, has virtually nothing to do with the shape, all right? Um, and so, the, the shape then is not in service of the, the ambitions of the poem, whereas uh, Easter Wings by, uh, by George Herbert is. It, the, the way that it's structured matches the, um, uh, the project of the poem or the thing it's talking about. Now, just so that you, uh, before I dig into the poem itself, uh, you should know that this poem was originally, uh, was originally published you know, by the typesetters um, like that. Okay, so that would have been the, the, the north-south orientation because now you can see, um, of course, this looks like, you know, where the, uh, where the wings attach to the backs of angels or, uh, you know, or to the backs of birds or whatever it is uh, that we're talking about, okay? Uh, however, this is, the, uh, this is the way that it, that it appears uh, then uh, for us. Okay, so uh, one thing that I, I think I should probably um, mention is that um, you know, there's, there's been criticism of these types of poems. Um, uh, for example, you know, uh, Addison considered them to be false wit, especially when there was uh, you know, little a little integration of subject and shape and this sort of thing. Um, so the poem that I showed you below was essentially uh, recasting Proverbs 23, 29 through 32, okay? Uh, poured into that shape of the chalice, um, but um, but really, where our interest here is in is in how form follows function. Um, so let's go ahead and and we'll dig into this poem, and I'm going to unpack it in the, in a way that's similar to what we have looked at um, at other poems so far. So Easter Wings by George Herbert. Lord, who createst man and wealth and store. Though foolishly he lost the same, decaying more and more till he became most poor. With thee, O oh, let me rise as larks harmoniously, and sing this day thy victories. Then shall the fall further the flight in me. My tender age and sorrow did began, and still with sicknesses and shame, thou didst so punish sin that I became most thin. With thee, 
let me combine and feel this day thy victory. For if I imp my wing on thine, affliction shall advance the flight in me. Okay, so um, so basically, here is a uh, this is an example of uh, of apostrophe. Okay, so uh, we I think remember. Let me go ahead and move my uh, screen down here a little bit. Um, so apostrophe, as you know, is a poem that um, in which the speaker addresses someone or something that cannot respond. So of course. This, this is something like a prayer. So he's addressing God. Yep. Um, so, thou who's created, Lord, who creates man in wealth and store or abundance, though foolishly he, so man lost the same. So that we have the, um, uh, the, uh, the implied reference to, uh, to original sin and having been cast out of the Garden of Eden. So decaying more and more till he became most poor. So notice, that at the decaying and then the most poor occurs then as the as the lines diminish okay as they as they narrow down and so this this phrase here with the that we see in this uh, in this spot in this stanza and in this spot in this stanza so notice then that once he evokes uh, God's name and God's help in uh, in the speaker's life then Things expand. Okay, they become solid, like a uh, like the base uh, of something that uh, upon which one can can really build. Okay, so you can see how there there was some playing around with the with the spacing here. So if you can imagine this having been originally, it was you know it was handwritten, you know, and then and then printed. Um, so whether you use uh, you know the press or, or what have you to achieve this sort of effect. Okay, um, so. Oh, let me rise as lark. So here's a nice example of um, uh, of a simile, right? So the the um, uh, the speaker is the tenor, and then the lark is the vehicle. And so what we're talking about then is not only a bird that um, uh, that is able to to take flight, uh, but also uh, singing. So we, we know from scripture the idea of singing, um, you know, uh, the praise to God and and so forth. Yes. And sing this day thy victories, then shall the fall further the flight in me. All right. And so then again, uh, there, there's sort of the, uh, the in the first stanza, you've got this this like macrocosmic view of uh, of the world. So man uh, being created, so all of mankind is essentially what we're talking about here. And then now, uh, the second stanza, it's it's narrowed. Okay to the speaker himself. My tender age in sorrow did begin. So the, uh, perhaps the, the suggestion is that, um, that he had not fully embraced uh, God's power, uh, had not invited um, the Lord into his life. And so, and still with sicknesses and shame, thou didst so punish sin that I became most thin. So again, before he is, um, uh, it's fully committed, then uh, Lord in his righteousness um, has uh, has punished him and made him thin. Not only the sense that he is, um, uh, you know, perhaps uh, devoid of body fat and and uh, you know and frail looking, but also the idea that uh, that the abundance that we referred to uh, in the opening stanza has been denied the speaker again because he has not uh, you know fully committed himself to uh, to God and Christ. So now, let me combine, so isn't this marvelous, with thee, let me combine. So as he combines words, it would get wider. And feel this day thy victory. For if I imp, and in this case, imp is uh, in falconry, uh, it's the inserting of feathers in a, uh, in a bird's wing. Imp my wing on thine, affliction shall advance the flight in me. All right, so why don't we take a look at um, uh, at some of the the, you know, the more prosaic stuff that we've talked about before. So if we go at the at the rhyme scheme, so we've got store is our A line, same is our B line, more is A, became is our B, and then poor is going to be then an A line, but it's going to be a slant A. Yes. Okay, so now 
with the, so notice we got a little change here, with the, with the C, let me rise with the D harmoniously, so the C, and then victories, it's a slant D, and then in me, so we've got uh, back then to uh, the C line, yeah. Now, I'm going to guess um, that, let's see, we'll, I'll tell you what, we'll just go ahead and we'll continue the, um, uh, the scheme here uh, to see how that works. Okay, so if we go with, uh, with begin, then we've got now an E line, and then shame, so we're back to B. You're going to see that as the, um, as the speaker intertwines his life with God's, that the, that the rhyme scheme is going to interlock. All right, so begin and sin, we've got the E line, and became, be, most, then. So there we have the F. And now with the, so we're back to the C line. Let me combine. Victory back to the C. Thine is the G, and then me is the C. So you can see this, this nice interlocking element again that, um, uh, that the speaker wants, God's, uh, wants God to be entwined uh, in his life um, to his, uh, uh, of course, his benefit. Okay, so Lord who creates man in wealth and store. Lord who Createst man in wealth and store, though foolishly he lost the same, decaying more and more, till he became most poor. All right, so if I'm, uh, again, if I'm scanning that, you can see that. Um, uh, till he became, so I've got uh, two stress syllables. I've got a spondaic foot followed by an I am. Most poor is going to be a spondy also because the emphasis is on, uh, on what happens when you don't uh, join your life to God's. So then with the, got the spondy, oh, so you remember from an earlier uh, uh, presentation that, um, that this uh, exclamation is called ekphonesis. Right? So that's our, um, uh, our exclamation, draws a, uh, attention to the emotion of the situation. Oh, let me rise as larks harmoniously. You don't often see a five syllable word, do you? And sing this day thy victories. Then, so we've got that turn, shall the fall further the flight in me. And so I'm really hoping that you can see that. Okay, I don't know if I should turn on the, uh, is the LED work any better? Eh, it really doesn't. Sorry. Okay. Well, that's what happens when uh, daylight savings time takes over, right? Not such great light. All right, so if we go to the next, my tender age in sorrow did begin, right? So if we count the lines, and we should probably have just gone up and done, done that from the top. So uh, first line then is going to be a, um, uh, is 10 beats. Though foolishly he lost the same, eight beats. Gee, I wonder what the next one's going to be. Decaying more and more, six. What do you think the next one's going to be? Four. Till he became, yep. Most poor. And then, with thee, two. Oh, let me rise. Four, six, eight, and ten. Okay, think it's going to happen uh, here in the second stanza? Bet you it does. My tender age and sorrow did begin. Ten. And still with sicknesses and shame. Eight. 
thou didst so punish sin, six, that I became, four, most then, two, with thee, two, let me combine, four, six, and then bottom would have counted out. I didn't this day thy victory, I can't help myself. Ooh, and feel this day thy victory. Wait a minute. Guess what? George pulled a fast one on us, didn't he? Did you see here? Uh, third line from the last, eight beats. For if I imp my wing on thine, also eight beats. Affliction shall advance the flight in me in 10. So, I'm going to circle that line. And perhaps the suggestion then is that um, uh, with God, we have an even more solid foundation than the 6, 8, 10 line from above in the uh, in the first stanza. Now we've got an 8, 8, 10. How about that? All right, so if we're scanning then, um, and still with sicknesses and shame thou didst so punish sin so stress 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 unstress stress that i became most thin with thee all those stress syllables yeah let me combine and feel is that verb this day thy victory. For if I imp my wing on thine, I mean, that, that, that's, for if I imp my wing on thine, I mean, there's just almost no other way to say it. It's, it's, it's definitely not an iambic line, okay? Affliction shall advance the flight in me. Affliction shall advance the flight in me. All right, so um, so in pointing this out, and this is going to be a relatively short vid, uh, because again, I just wanted to, to point out how, how Carmina uh, Figurata works, and to see that in, uh, in George Herbert's poem, that form does follow function, okay? As the poem thins down, what's he talking about? He's talking about being without um, uh, without God, and then with thee, we see the uh, uh, a, a, an expansion, okay, a blossoming, uh, a solidity that makes this, um, you know, sort of the, uh, I call it the plinth, but it's something like, you know, the, the foundation here, uh, maybe the foundation of faith, okay? So uh, let's see. The I guess the only other piece, you know, with the with the figurative language, um, I guess we could take a look at uh, at some of the. Uh, so I, I mentioned the the, the the simile that occurs there up at the top, um, the idea that if if he imps or um, or inserts feathers, um, in in a marvelous kind of way. I mean, I, I'm sure some of you have seen the um, uh, the kind of iconic poster of um, you know uh, God walking. Um, uh, you know, the man sees his life, uh, and he's walking on the beach, and, uh, you know, God walking along with him, and there's the uh, the footprints, and then at uh, the worst times in his life, uh, it's only his footprints that he sees, and or only t one set of footprints that he sees, and says, God, where'd you go? And he's like, oh, and it was then that I carried you. So you have the same sort of uh, idea here, it seems like, with the, um, uh, that the, the joining of uh, of the wings um, to God's then. So, of course, the implied metaphor is that, um, uh, you know, God as Holy Spirit then is um, uh, is taking flight, is there above the uh, above, above the earthly considerations of, um, of capital M, man here. Okay, so uh, let's see. If we're going to take a look at, at, uh, at any of the, uh, the other um, devices then, You know, um, I mentioned in an earlier presentation the use of, um, of figures of repetition. So these are rhetorical figures of repetition. Um, so this one here, just for your reference, um, more and more is called uh, plochi. Okay. So if you hear, see the the uh, the phrase, you know, again and again, or over and over, 
Uh, these are examples of uh, this rhetorical figure called ploci, uh, which is the repetition of, uh, of a phrase uh, in almost a medic succession. Typically, it is um, uh, divided by um, a conjunction. And it is, it is for emphasis, of course. Uh, now, when you have two words that, um, that appear, uh, that are repeated uh, one right after the other, uh, that's something else. It's called epizuxis. And again, whenever you have repetitions of words and so forth, this is for, uh, for emphasis, um, for vehemence, uh, things of that nature. Okay? So let's see. Um, I think that um, uh, worth mentioning here, you know, uh, the, in terms of like the sound devices and so forth, um, and sing this day thy victories, then shall, and, you, and I, I think you probably heard this, fall further the flight in me. So, you know, you can say that sounds like the, um, you know, the, the F sounds, because to make the F sound, you have to blow air um, out through, um, uh, through your mouth with your, with your teeth against your lips and so forth. Okay, so, so that, that sound of the air passing over your, um, you know, between your, your teeth and your lips is not unlike the air perhaps passing over, um, over the wings of a bird uh, type thing, okay? Um, you've got some, some sibilance here with, and still with sickness says and shame. Uh, the SH is not, you know, does not play exactly with the other S's, but, but all together uh, you've got that, um, uh, that, that S sound, which, which does not sound particularly um, euphonious, okay, or pleasant, right? Uh, matching the, the, the sicknesses and shame. Uh, thou didst so punish sin. So again, we have that the S's here with so and uh, sin, and of course the SH there. That I became most thin. Um, and feel this day thy victory, for if I imp my wing on thine. So we've got the, uh, the I sound of I, the short I of if and imp. Um, my wing on thine, affliction. So the FL here, and then it plays together with the FL here in flight. Affliction shall advance the flight in me. Okay, so this is just a, like I said, a, a quick uh, run through this poem. And um, if I were going to write about this one, you know, I might, I might speak to how the, um, uh, how George Herbert has employed the uh, the, the, the figure uh, of the poem in service of uh, of the poem's central message, okay, which is that um, you know without God, you know things are awfully thin, uh, but then here with God, uh, we've got the the, the solidity uh, and so forth that we're looking for um, in our lives, okay. Uh, let's see. I think that's pretty much all I have to. Um, uh, to say about that. So uh, if you have questions, I hope then that you will um, reach out.